One of the roadblocks towards organizational success lies on how things are being done by the people involved. At times, managers and supervisors stress over unmet deadlines and slow progress towards their goals. It's as if nothing is being done, even if each member of the team seems to be busy with a lot of work. Such a scenario then leads to feelings of exhaustion and frustration, which reduces productivity and satisfaction at work. It is this reality that inspired Jeff Sutherland to examine what's really happening and to come up with a solution to remedy it. This is when he devised a new framework of thinking and doing, which is said to generate better productivity and outputs. This book introduces this framework, which is called Scrum, which promises to help us do twice the work in just half the time. Here are the top seven lessons from the book Scrum by Jeff Sutherland. Lesson one, take off old practices. The Scrum method introduces a new way of doing things, which is a departure from the traditional practices that organizations are used to. But if we keep doing the same thing, we will get the same results, right? So the first thing that we must do to experience significant changes and improvements in the organization is to get rid of the old practices. Sure, these traditional practices may be effective, but these may no longer be applicable in the present time or there might be more effective solutions already. The Scrum method challenges us to try new ways of doing things that are more effective. Lesson two, fill in key positions. Sutherland identifies three key positions in the organization. The product owners, POs, the Scrum master, and the team. The POs basically decide what to do and sets the reasons behind the goal. Thus, it is their task to persuade everyone to commit to the same vision and goal. The team, on the other hand, includes everyone who actually does the work. Ideally, they're composed of three to nine people who possess the skills and the abilities to realize the group's vision. Lastly is the Scrum Master, who acts like a coach and focuses on thinking of strategies on how the team could work better. The Scrum Master monitors the team's performance and helps remove any obstacle that slows down their progress. Lesson three, go for the sprints. In the Scrum approach, chunking and breaking down big goals into small actionable ones are preferred rather than setting out for grand altogether. Sutherland calls this as sprints, or a basic unit of work, ranging from two to four weeks, where a result is expected and a result and feedback are generated at the end. Thus, at the end of each sprint, the team should produce a product or a goal, present it to the team and to the client, and solicit feedback, which they will then use as a guide for the new goals to be set for the next sprint. This could be helpful since the team will be able to refine their product and their process in every step of the way until they reach their ultimate goal. Lesson four, do regular scrum meetings. Aside from breaking down big goals into periodic sprints, Sutherland also suggests the team to conduct a daily scrum. A daily scrum is like a meeting where everyone answers three questions. What did I do yesterday? What am I going to do today? And what help do I need? Spending time for these quick scrum meetings will help the team synchronize their activities, which will guide them on their goals for the day and how to achieve them. This is where the scrum master also comes in, helping assess problems and difficulties and devise solutions for it. Lesson five create a sprint backlog. One thing that could also be helpful for the organization in monitoring their progress towards their goal is for the team to create a sprint backlog. A sprint backlog shows what work has been completed already and what work still needs to be done in line with their set timelines. Being able to accurately monitor the team's progress will help enhance accountability among the members of the team and could also motivate them to work harder if they want to accomplish the tasks they commit to finish over a certain period. Lesson six, place a scrum board. On top of keeping a sprint backlog, Sutherland suggests to keep a scrum board where all the tasks and the progress are visible for everyone. The scrum board lists all things to be done, the people responsible for each task, and the progress of each task, or whether it's completed already. This scrum board is visible to anyone who enters the work area, and seeing the tasks and the progress could help increase one's motivation to work harder to achieve goals. This also serves as a reminder for those who haven't been doing their part to take accountability over their tasks and to start working on what they're supposed to do. Lesson seven, streamline the process. Another strategy proposed by the Scrum framework is to streamline all processes involved in attaining the team's goals. If the goals can be achieved in a simplified and less complicated manner, then the better. For instance, if an important agenda can be discussed in an hour, then there won't be a need to spend the entire afternoon for a meeting. The Scrum framework follows the 80-20 principle, which suggests that we can get the most results from the least inputs. Thus, the team needs to carefully plan what the most important task to prioritize and how to effectively and efficiently attain those tasks. In conclusion, overall, the book introduces the Scrum framework, which offers specific and practical strategies to ensure a productive, self-reliant, and satisfied work team. The strategies offered by the book does not only focus on organizational productivity, but also acknowledges the fact that being mindful of the welfare of each team member is also a crucial factor behind the entire organization's productivity and success.
Thank you for listening. If you like the book summary and you want to see more in this category, please like and subscribe so I can create more. You can also get a free copy of the entire audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.